We're continuing our theme in uh, Hebrews, and uh, today uh, we're going to be reading some from Hebrews chapter 11 and 12. And by now it should be fairly familiar to you because this has been our text for the last several weeks somewhere, but each time we focus on a different thing. I was reading, uh, this being Mother's Day, about a, a very interesting lady. And uh, this lady has been on the run most of her life. Her name is Rosa Gutierrez. She is, uh, lives in California. And she runs about 80 or 90 miles a week. She has uh, quite an impressive resume. But she has been a, like a five-time qualifier in the Olympics trials. She has broken a lot of records. And she is also on top of an outstanding runner, uh, a weightlifter. And uh, she's won some uh, medals, I think, in swimming as well. So she's pretty, pretty remarkable. But uh, on, on top of that, uh, these days, uh, one of her main jobs is she's, she's a coach uh, at a high school in uh, California, San Jose, California. But she's also a Christian. She's a coach at a Christian school. And for her, uh, <clears throat> this passage today in Hebrews really does mean a lot. And she talks about the fact that uh, how that this great cloud of witnesses is something that she thinks about when she is running the marathons that she runs. And uh, she has learned to overcome a lot of obstacles in her life. And that's our theme today really is in the obstacles. So let's take a moment to look at that uh, in Hebrews. We'll, we'll kind of uh, look at that together. But the passage there, uh, first of all, talking about obstacles is really uh, something that most of us have, have never experienced. But the people in, in these, these passages of Scripture have went through some amazing things. But if you back up uh, to uh, verse 11, uh, chapter 11, Hebrews 11, and around verse 29, it says, By faith they passed through the Red Sea, as by dry land, which the Egyptians, uh, saying to do, were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down, after they were compassed about seven days. By faith the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. <clears throat> and what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David, also Samuel and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouth of lions, Quench the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, and out of weakness was made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of aliens. And then it goes on to talk about women and people who were, uh, their dead were raised to life again, people were tortured, uh, sawn in sunder, all kinds of cruel scourgings and imprisonment. And the list goes on and on. And so, if we think about running the Christian life and running this race today, we understand that any Olympian or any runner has some obstacles and some things to contend with in the Christian life. It's not all that easy, as you might imagine. You know, uh, when you think about some of the, the endurance and the pers uh, perseverance that they have to have to do these marathons, uh, I can't imagine the, the training, the amount of training and the psychological uh, toll that it takes on them financially too. I mean, there's just so much th to think about. Most of us, uh, you know, we don't do that kind of endurance, but life is sort of a race for us too, and it's an endurance. But uh, I know 
in my younger days, I ran cross country. Uh, these days, uh, I don't run 26 miles, but I run a little bit. But I found out in, as I'm getting older, I can't just take off running, uh, John, and just, just, just take off and, and into a run because what I found is that when I do, I pull a lot of muscles, you know. And in the early days, I could just take off and it didn't seem to bother me. So what I have to do is kind of work up to it and, and warm up and, and do a little warm up and go from a, a slow walk to a little bit of a faster walk and then to finally a, kind of a pay, pick up the pace into a jog. Although, uh, I, I, I don't know that if you call what I do running, I, I think sometimes that there's people that pass me up walking, so it's probably not really running, but it, it's what I consider running. But, you know, thinking about uh, Rosa, she uh, has learned how to endure a lot. And, you know, when she said that when she thinks about running the race, she thinks about that great cloud of witnesses that are not only here today, but those that have gone before her, including her mother and her father, who have already gone on. But they taught her the value of perseverance. And they came over from Mexico with no money in their pockets and raised about 11 children. And they learned how to persevere through tough times. And they taught her that even when things seem like, uh, when you can't go on another step and things seem rough, that there is something deep within you that will help you to keep going and inspire you to go on as, if you know the Lord. And so she says that for her, uh, it's not just about winning gold medals or winning medals, but today a lot of her aspirations is about bringing others to Christ and being all that she can be for God. You see, there's something higher than what this earth can offer. In those days, in those races, and they would give out these wreaths and different rewards that were just temporary. And the Bible talks about how the, any kind of reward that we get in this life it's just a temporary you know, reward. But in the life to come, it's eternal. And it lasts forever. And if we think about that, we think about the fact that in life, there's going to be obstacles that come your way. And if you don't do anything because of obstacles, you'll never do anything. Life is like that. Whether you're studying for a degree or whether you're uh, trying to get a job, whatever it is you're going through, there's going to be obstacles. And you've got to learn how to overcome those obstacles. i uh, thinking about the fact that this is, is Mother's Day weekend. I can't help but think about my own mother and the obstacles that she faced in her Christian life. In order to live her Christian life, she had to overcome a lot of obstacles. One, she had to overcome a husband, my father, who was uh, an alcoholic and, and uh, sometimes very hard to deal with. But she also had four ungrateful children that uh, she took to church and we weren't always uh, very cooperative, as you might imagine. But I'm thankful for her and I'm thankful for that as I think about the fact that she, she did uh, step up and take us to church and, and instilled in us a spiritual desire that it, it didn't even take root then. It, the seeds were placed in us, but it eventually did take root. And I'm so thankful for that. Now think about the obstacles that my mother went through and also the time in her life. You know, we had a, we had a, a child that uh, my, my baby sister who developed cancer when she was just uh, a couple years old. And uh, mom and dad went through a lot of times taking her to Louisville to treatments. And I, got, I was able to go a few times with them. But I, I just remember that time she was in uh, remission for about a year and a half and things were well. And then the cancer came back with a vengeance until finally, uh, you know, it, it took her out of this world. I remember that day when I went to my mother and, and I, I was at a friend's house and they, when I, uh, they woke me from my sleep and said, your, your baby sister passed away today and she was in the hospital. 
And so they took me to, home, to my mom's, and, and the first thing I did when I walked in the house is I just went to my mother, and I fell in her arms, and we both cried. Mom, after that, uh, she went into a very deep depression and even a, uh, a time of, uh, I, I guess you would call it a mental breakdown. She spent some time in the hospital, and, and it really affected her uh, in, in a very big way. It affected us all, but Mom, uh, I, I don't know if she ever was quite the same after that. But at the same time, I still, uh, was so, I'm still so impressed at the fact that my mother through all of those things in her life, continued to have faith in God, that her faith never wavered. She continued to go to church. And I think that in, in many ways that was the only peace that maybe she ever really had, was the peace that she found in the Lord. And I saw a joy in her heart, and I saw something that uh, I, I, I didn't understand then. When I would see my mom cry and, and shout and sing in church, she, she sung and uh, and just the joy that she had and the peace that she had in spite of everything. And I'm thankful that she persevered. And uh, as I got older and become a Christian, and I was able to join my mother in singing, we were able to sing together until uh, she was not able to sing anymore. But I think about people like that, people in our lives, as we look back on this great cloud of witnesses, and the faith that they had. You know, in the book of Timothy, uh, in 2 Timothy, uh, he talks about uh, the mother and grandmother there. Uh, Paul uh, kind of uh, given Timothy a charge to preach the Word and, and the importance of that. And in chapter uh, 1 and verse 5 of 2 Timothy, he says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. And I'm persuaded that also with you. And so Paul talks about the fact that it all began because somebody down the road cared enough about you to tell you about Jesus and to tell you about their faith. And that faith is carried over from generation to generation, from a grandmother and a mother to a child. And now this child is preaching the gospel. And I think about my own life, where I would be today if it weren't for somebody like that in my life that stood up and told me about Jesus. And I can remember times as a little child just getting them up in mom's in, in the rocking chair with the, with the Bible and her telling me the story of Daniel in the lion's den. Tell me the story of David and how she lived her Christian life. And I didn't understand the joy that she had then, but I, I know a little bit about it now. I know a little bit about the joy that is set before him. I kind of understand what he's talking about there. Because the Bible says that Jesus, despite all the things that happened, the shame that he had to endure, and the pain and the, and the cross, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. Because he saw out there a, a better world for the people of God. And he was able, he was able to, to endure the obstacles that he faced because of that. You and I will, not, will probably not have to give our lives when we may, but uh, most of us will not die a cruel death like that, hopefully. But we'll overcome some obstacles in our life. Some of you already have, whether it be financial obstacles, whether it be health, relationships, all kinds of things. The Christian life, nobody said it was easy. And if they did tell you it was easy, they probably lied to you. But, but here's the thing. We live in a world where we're going, to over, we're going to have to overcome a few things. The race that is set before us has some obstacles. But when you read some of these things that they endured, it's minor compared to what we, we go through in this life. And so we set out on this journey together in this run, this race that we walk or run. And we look at the people who've gone before us and those surrounding us now. Whenever I ran cross country or track or whatever, 
I always knew that when I was getting ready to cross the finish line that there would be a few people there to cheer us on. Maybe not a whole lot of people, but my coach would be there. I knew that. And then some of my teammates or some of my other friends would be there. And as I think about the Christian life, I think about the fact that, that the, Jesus is there for us. And I, I, and I can't help but think about, uh, you know, Michelle, about the, uh, when, when we talk about the uh, finishing that line and how heaven is counting on us, I always think back about uh, to, uh, our events when we go to uh, these retreats. And uh, they tell us, you know, uh, heaven is counting on you or Jesus is counting on you. And we repeat, I'm counting, and I'm counting on Him. Because today, we can't do anything without Him. And we need Him in our life. And so, today, just be thankful for the joy that you have in your life. And don't allow the obstacles, whatever they are, to keep you from following God. You know, we, as a church, we're facing some obstacles right now we've never faced before. The obstacle of not being able to meet in a building like we once we're able to do. I was uh, talking to a pastor not long ago, and he said, he said, my fear is that they'll get so used to not being in church that we won't be able to get them back. Well, I don't know. That may be true of some people. But most of the people I know are anxious to be back together to worship the Lord. Because there's something deep within us that longs to be with God and be with His people. Do we have to have a building to worship God? No, we found that, to be, that we don't have to have a building. But yet the people of God have always had a desire to come together, to sing the songs of Zion, to hear the Word preached, and to encourage and admonish one another in the Christian faith. It's, it's a Christian race. And it helps sometimes when we are encouraging one another there's been times, and you know, thinking back in my running days where it felt like I couldn't take another step. I remember when I was a freshman in high school, we used to run at Johnson Central, and we would run the cornfields and through uh, all around the, the area by the high school there. And I remember uh, one, one particular song I used to listen to when I was running. Uh, I would listen to a song, Fly Like an Eagle. Uh, and I don't know if you remember that song, but uh, I had a fella in the cornfield with, with a tape player. Back then you, did, you had these big boom boxes. That when I come through that cornfield to turn that song up, because it inspired me to run. And so as I came through there, that song, Fly Like an Eagle, was playing. And, it, and I was at that point just about ready to give up. And it just gave me the extra strength to go on. And you know, in the Christian life, we all have those times where we feel like giving up. And I think of that scripture in the Bible that says that we uh, wait on, those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and faint. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. I used to watch the eagles and the birds fly in Wilmore, Kentucky when I was a, a student at Asbury Seminary. And I would go to a place called High Bridge that overlooked this mountain and uh, overlooked the, uh, the beautiful Kentucky River. And I would watch the wind pick up these birds and they would just fly around so effortlessly. It was the winds that they were just soaring on. And most of us are flapping around trying to get off the ground and they were just soaring miles above the earth. And I think that's the idea in the Christian life is that when we try to do things on our own strength, we will become discouraged and we'll become weak and fatigued. But when we allow the power of the Holy Spirit to lift us up above this earth and the encouragement from our brothers and sisters in Christ, then we can soar and we can fly like an eagle. And so run, run the race. As, as uh, we could say, run Forrest Run, or run Rosa Run, or run Sandy Run, whoever it is, I want you to run this race today. Find the motivation from within and from without that you need to run this race. Let's pray as the musicians come. Dear Father, 
we know that we all get discouraged sometimes. And we know, Father, that life has many obstacles. But God, I want to pray that you would help us to overcome these obstacles, that, that by faith that we could see the end is in sight. And God, we are going to a city where our builder and maker is God. I pray for all those that are discouraged right now, Lord. Lift them up high above the cares of this world. May they experience the power of the Holy Spirit and the winds and the wings of your love, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We're going to get a song, and uh, as always, uh, we, uh, we invite you to just trust the Lord today, wherever you are, to pray that prayer we prayed before. Just a simple prayer like, Lord Jesus, be merciful to me, a sinner. And if you mean that with your heart, God promised He would not turn you away. Would you do that as we sing this song?